Welcome back to the YouTube. Today, we're going to discuss one of my most hated topics, but one of the topics that people still ask about and still debate. That is, how should I charge for my services? And that's not just how, like how much you should charge, but actually how you should take the payment. How do you structure it? Do you let people pay in monthly installments? Do you let people pay in full? And what kind of coach does that make me if I do that? So before we get into it, we're going to discuss both the main models that people use and the pros and cons. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification to let you know when we do more videos and we're going to jump right in. So the two main models of pricing that you will find, and there are more than this, but these are the two most common ones, okay? There is a monthly payment subscription and there is a paid in full, okay? So monthly payments is where you take the overall cost of your program over the initial commitment period. Let's say your initial program or your initial commitment that you ask for is four months um, and your program is a thousand pounds for that four months, you would split the payments down into four equal payments of 250 pounds. Now, if you were paying full, you would just charge the total thousand pounds in the first instance, they pay the 4,000 pounds, they are credited with four months of coaching. They're the two main models. Now there's loads of different permutations you can get into that like you can do you can split it into two payments you can split it into three payments you could do a, a slightly higher payment at the start and then lower monthlies you, there's loads of different ways okay and that would be a completely separate video me talking through like sales psychology and buyer psychology but also a lot of finance and cash flow forecasting i'm not going to do that today because both of those would bore the piss out of you so what i'm going to do is just describe these two main models the pros and cons so you can make a choice for yourself. So the monthly rolling payment option. This is the one that's touted by people who hate taking payment up front. They're not very good and don't like sales. And they have a bit of a mm, strange mindset about money, I would argue. Okay. This is also, you know, something that coaches get into earlier in the career because they're not quite sure and they're not quite confident about sales. So they find this is the easier option. And that's one of the pros. The pros of the monthly rolling option is it's easier to sell on the front end. You're technically asking for more money. People, when they purchase things, unless the payment's really, really high, they generally don't worry about like, the, they just really care about the monthly cost, especially in the UK. People in the UK have almost trained themselves to think about what will this cost me monthly instead of thinking about the total cumulative cost. So if you have maybe a program that you want to get a higher price for, um, you might be better to split it down monthly. You would collect more money over the four months rather than trying to take payment in full at the start. It could end up with actually more money in your bank. However, it's also easier to manage within your bank account because you are getting recurring payments every single month. And, you know, it's just easier from a cash flow perspective. It's not easy to manage from a payment management perspective. It's easier from a cash flow perspective. Um, you know you've got X amount coming in every month that's contracted already at the start of each month when you start to do your financial forecasting. And in honesty, if you have a monthly payment option, you will generally capture more of your audience with that because people may not always have the cash at hand to pay it in full, but they may have the cash at hand to at least pay the first monthly installment and get started and then save up or do what they need to for the rest of the money. So you can capture a slightly wider range of sales with that. Now, the cons of monthly rolling payments, and there are some, people would have you believe there's none, but there are things that you need to think about with regards to rolling monthly payments. The first one is that when you are starting your business, or if you're in a period of you know wanting to grow very quickly, taking monthly payments will spread out your cash flow. If you are somebody that's not very good at managing finances, that might be a good thing for you. But if you're somebody that wants money there to reinvest back into something that is working, if you've got a program and you've got a method of marketing, for example, and you know if you put money in, you get more money out. If you can, if you do monthly payments, you're not going to have as big of a pot of cash to invest into that process. And therefore, you are going to slow your growth down. That is one thing that if you are of a slightly you know, more advanced level, if you have ways of turning cash into more cash, you realistically want to collect as much cash as you can on the front end to be able to kind of put it back into that machine and help the business grow faster. The other thing is when you start doing monthly rolling payments, there is a management element to it, okay? People's payments will bounce. People will want to change their payment dates. 
things, you know, cards get declined, people change their card details. It creates a level of administration for your program that I don't think a lot of coaches are actually aware of. And it's probably the thing that they hate doing the most. They hate chasing payments. They hate speaking to clients about it. You know, they dread when they check the Stripe account and they see those red failed Xs. And unfortunately, monthly payments cause that. They don't happen with upfront payments. You're paid for the whole term. You don't need to worry about whether the money's going to come in. You don't get excuses of, oh, I'm going to be late this month or, oh, this has happened or my tire has gone, okay, for people who haven't managed the cash correctly during the week. So if you have an audience or you're working with a market that generally aren't very good at managing their cash, say you work with, you know, young males from 18 to 24 who will want to get shredded for a beefer, soon as the weather starts getting better and those cunts are out every weekend, you're going to start to get bounced payments on a Monday when they spent too much at the weekend before. And that's going to be up to you to chase the cunt out of his come down on a Monday morning, and try and find your payment. You won't want to do it. They don't want to listen to you. They don't get back to you till Thursday. And then your payments are all pushed back by eight days because you're definitely not going to be able to restart it from the day you failed the payment. So that's one of the major considerations that people don't make. You could also, if you are dealing with too many issues like that and you have certain things within your business as you grow, you can actually end up be cash negative. So if you have a referral system, if you are running paid ads and you're paying for leads, if you have to pay lead generators and coaches and sales staff out of those payments to start with, you may find that in some setups, your first monthly payment actually doesn't make you any profit at all. And in some situations can be cash negative. So you might actually spend more to get the client than they spend in their first monthly payment. And if that second payment doesn't come in, you've actually paid out more than you've got in your bank, which means that you're actually didn't in your financial situation. That's one maybe for the coaches that are a little bit further along. Getting cash up front isn't always when you need to generate cash at the start of your business. It's also when you've got large upfront costs and things like that, and you're paying for leads and you're paying outgoings on that. You may want to make sure that you collect a bit more cash in full just to make sure that you're covered for all of those things and you can have the best growth. Paid in full. Paid in full, you will imagine Wolf of Wall Street, bells ringing, people go down slides, popping champagne, that kind of sales, okay? The racy, big ticket, big money kind of sales. Doesn't always need to be in that fashion. Paid in full has its negatives, like you will be aware, but it also has positives just aside from the dopamine rush of taking a big sale, okay? So we're gonna go through those now. Pros, it is excellent for cash flow, okay? Yes, it's great to get a thousand pound either way, but a thousand pounds spread over four months, I would rather have a thousand pounds in my bank day one. There's less management involved, I know it's there, and I can, if I'm clever with it, I can start to deploy and use that correctly. You can also, if you're in the early parts of your business, there's a level of breathing room that you want with your finances. And certain people have this mental line of like, I would like three grand in the bank for me to feel comfortable that shit's not gonna go south, okay? Paid in full can help you get there way, way faster than monthly payments. Monthly payments, it would take you, you know, four months. If you spread the payment out of four months, it takes you four months to get to that point, okay? Four months is a long time to be in a bit of a rocky financial situation. You can get more upfront sales. You can be there month one you can be in a very good position, okay? Number two, unfortunately, people aren't like saying this. I feel like clients are more bought in when they paid in full. I feel like they are less looking for like reasons every single 30 days to think about whether, oh, am I using this correctly? Am I getting it? Like, am I doing enough? Because generally people will be like, no, oh, I don't think I'm using the service that much for my own fault, I think I'll just try and get out of it because I don't really want to make that payment and go through the uncomfortable work that I have to do. Generally, transformational programs, our program business-wise is very transformational, physical transformational, mental transformational. It forces people to be uncomfortable and sometimes they shy away from doing the hard work for the first few weeks. If you have monthly rolling payments, you will find that a lot of people, when they are challenged with doing that hard work, will look for a way out instead. Paid in full means that people will pay attention and they will do the hard work or them. Some people will still fucking ignore you. But more people, the higher percentage of people will do that hard work because they feel like they've already paid the money so they might as well go through the process. And that can help you as a coach because it gives people less leverage 
to just try and pretend of make up some random reason why they don't want to do the heavy work in themselves. So the downside of it, okay, which are the cons of upfront sales. You need to make sales every month to make sure that your business is still making money. Even if you made 15 grand last month, if you don't make any sales this month, you will make zero pounds. Yes, you, you may average that as seven and a half thousand pounds over the course of a month, but it doesn't help you as a business owner have a great feeling about the position of your business. If you go through a two week period and you make zip and you're looking at zero on your strike balance, doesn't really fill you with confidence and it can start to chip away and create a sort of scarcity mindset with things. And then you end up making stupid decisions and rash decisions just trying to get sales back on track, regardless of whether you did an absolutely monster month the month before, which we do see with people sometimes. Sometimes people absolutely come out of nowhere, smash the back doors off things, make 8,000 pound. And then the month after, they're like, oh, I've only made two grand this month. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, you had no business three months ago and you've just made 10,000 pounds over the space of eight weeks. It's five grand a month. Like, you know, you're doing really well, but it's the mental aspect of having to make those sales and feeling like you're constantly doing it. Some people, you know, you're the very kind of dopamine driven people and the people that love to be aggressive with things like that and light the back up against the wall, it works really well for. People who are a little bit timid and worriers and people who like overthink things, it can be an actual, it can be a detriment and it can put you in a mental headspace that actually you end up shelling up. So the final thing you need to be aware of with upfront payments is you just have to manage your costs, okay? The, the struggles that people get into with upfront payments, it's not that, there's, you know, there's no difference. If you take four payments of 250 or you take a thousand pound, you've got to be a moron to not realize that that thousand pounds is spread over four months. That's fine. The problem is, is when you make four payments of a thousand pound, you pretend you have a four thousand pound a month repairing business. Then people start getting costs in around that. So they'll hire X and they'll hire Y or they'll start spending A and start spending B. They'll spend their money like they have a £4,000 recurring business and they don't. They have a £4,000 business in cash. They've got nothing guaranteed for the next month. There's no future contracted value, but they make costs like there are. And that's the problem. Yes, can you reinvest the one off? If you've made £4,000, can, you know, if you're willing to live on £2,000, can you invest that £2,000 in a one-off purchase to do something? Absolutely. But what people do is they'll sign up for an £1,000 a month subscription, making four grand month one. And then when it comes to month three and actually things are tapered down a little bit, then they end up with financial problems. So if you're taking payments on upfront, if you're going to sign up for services or you're going to hire things, pay it upfront and then you'll be able to manage your cash flow better. But don't make decisions on a monthly subscription basis when you don't know that you've got that projected revenue in future. In summary, okay, do both. We find that the most successful businesses that we work with, ours is the same. We're obviously somewhere between three and five million pound revenue right now. 50-50, um, anywhere from 50-50 upfront to recurring all the way to 100% recurring is probably the sweet spot to be in for most coaches. Some people are very, very heavy on paid in full when they first start the business. That's absolutely fine. But your goal should be to at least get it to 50-50. 50% of your revenue being recurring contracted, 50% of your revenue being upfront in full sales. And then as you grow, you can pick your own level of risk and where you, not risk, but your own appetite for upfront versus monthly. Some people are very cautious with their finances. Some people want absolute certainty with their monthly revenue. Then you would be more towards the monthly recurring side. If you are not too fussed and you want to prioritize cash flow and you want to grow your business and, and bring your top line up as fast as possible, then you may want to be more of a 50-50 split. You may be completely in the middle of those two. But it's a choice for you. So if you've got any questions about that, if you're unsure about what you may be charging or what might be the right thing to charge in your situation, find me on Instagram at steel underscore FBU. Give us a little bit of a rundown of kind of where you are in your business or what you're currently charging. We can kind of give you some help on how to sort your prices out from there. Thank you very much.